Throughout the past month on the channel, we've been focusing on the grand living room. That's what I'm calling this because there are two living rooms in this duplex that I'm converting into a single family home. We restored the floors, I pulled off the mantle and turned this into the original fireplace, went through three lime wash colors and two paint colors until I finally settled on Pharaoh and Ball's old white which looks incredible, painted the fireplace, and then got a couple of sconces hung up. So I think we're in a pretty good place. So today we are going to attempt to install the doors, the stained glass doors, which I dropped once and broke also once, not the time I dropped it. I'm so scared it's gonna fall. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. <gasps> The door's been sitting for about two and a half, three weeks since I ended up fixing it. As you guys saw, I reinserted some glass that I got cut down. Could not believe I found such a similar glass that fit with like the style because it was such an old window panel. Still a little bit tacky, however, you can install these day of if you glaze them properly. So that's what's happening today. We are going to be attempting to install the stained glass doors. I picked up a couple of new brackets or the little like hinges hinges not brackets at Lowe's just your generic kind of door hinges that fit in the grooves of the previous because actually let me share with you guys what the previous hinge looked like so this is the hinge right here that's on these doors now if you just look at it from here it kind of looks like a normal hinge but this side is so thick and I think it's just because these doors are metal framed they're also triple paned glass um so it's pretty heavy so this is really really thick but I wanted to find a hinge that was this exact same shape on both sides so essentially this on either side so that we could install the doors as you would traditional doors and I do have to add about two inches of wood to the bottom of the door as well which I want to try to match up to the stain that's on there so we're just gonna have to see how this goes I think we're gonna start off firstly with adding the wood so the stained glass doors that I bought were the proper width, but they were not the proper height. So I actually needed to add some wood to the bottom of the doors, but I wanted to make it look like it was not added. I want it to really look seamless. So I just measured out the width of each of the doors. Now for the wood that I'm using, this is actually a two by three piece of wood that I stacked a quarter inch piece on top of. I sandwiched those together and pressed them for a couple of days with some wood glue, and then I cut it down to the width of the door. So that was like the perfect sizing for my door. I didn't really share that process just because everyone's door is going to be different and mine was kind of a special case because I just needed to add some height to it so I actually use my pocket hole jig and I find this to come in so handy I didn't have one of these for the longest time but I highly suggest investing in one of these I will link it in the description box because you don't only have to use it with like the actual diagonal pocket hole method you could actually just use it as a drill bit and create pocket holes in anything like I did on the bottom of the store so I just drilled the holes and then I just screwed in some two inch screws all the way across the bottom for a nice secure bond on that door and then once I was done with that I actually brought the door outside to give it a good sanding so I just wanted to make the top surface nice and smooth and flush with the original door that way when I go in with the stain on the bottom it just matches up and looks nice brought the doors back inside and then I just laid them side by side because these were actually originally window panels. They were not stained glass doors. They just happened to be the size of a door that I'm turning into doors. So I wanted to figure out which one I wanted on the left, which one I wanted on the right. So I created the placement for that and this is what it was looking like. We have the doors placed next to each other. We added the additional length that we needed at the bottom and it is so nice and just clean and flush. We also mounted it extremely sturdy, so those are gonna be great. And I'm very happy with the process so far. So now what we need to do is remove one of these stained glass doors that's on here so that we can get the placement for the hinges because we're gonna be using the same frame that was used for these doors. Um, so I wanna find the hinge placement so that we could put them in the exact spots. Okay, we're doorless. Those are heavy. They're so, so heavy. heavy. The actual heaviest door I have ever held in my life. They're probably like 150 to almost 200 pounds a door. I don't know, they're just super heavy. So I actually ended up transferring the hinge placement from the previous doors onto the new ones, just using a ruler. And then I traced the bracket shape on because we're gonna need to router these out. And I picked up a router attachment for my Dremel actually. If you guys didn't know they had this, they do and it's like 30 bucks. 
I just did one of these off camera and look how good the hinge fits. It's like perfectly flush. This process is a little hard to share because it happens like within the tool, but basically there's kind of like a drill bit that also eats away at the wood and it just kind of drops lower than that plastic bit and we're routering out the hinge shape. So I just did this to an eighth of an inch so our hinge can fit in there. a small drill bit to drill a couple of pilot holes across this hinge here and then I used the screws that it came with to screw those in. to install the first door. I was a little nervous about this, but the size of the door was spot on and I just felt good. The hinges were in the right spot. So I started to drill those in or screw them into the side of the door. I did have to go through and actually add a couple of additional holes for the hinges to fit properly. And then we went through and just did a little bit of initial sanding because this first door as we closed it didn't properly close. And I wish I freaking got this on camera. I don't know how I didn't, but I didn't. installing the second door. the camera was outside during this so when we went to shut the second door I didn't get like an actual reaction but it actually shut pretty good I mean look at that it was still a little bit stuck but I will say that the tops of the doors kind of had this weird angle of wood that we had to sand off so that's what I got into doing right there was sanding we did quite a bit of sanding I would say probably about two hours of sanding on this door just to ensure that it would close properly and everything would line up and we still had space for our weather stripping because we want to ensure no rain gets in these doors of course so I actually got some weather stripping at Lowe's and I lined the entire door the insides of them the tops the lefts and the right sides and it worked absolutely perfectly good morning everybody it has been an interesting past couple of days because I actually got really sick on Tuesday so we started installing the stained glass doors on Monday and I got pretty sick on Tuesday like midway through the day I was like oh my gosh I'm feeling so congested and just like run down and then I ended up just taking the rest of the day off on Tuesday and then Wednesday and Thursday I was down bad like I was in my bed the entire day morning to night said I think it's the weather in Los Angeles it also ended up raining last night and you guys kind of saw where we left off the doors the great thing was is that we actually added the weather stripping right before and it rained not one drop of water got in the house which is incredible it rained all last night for like probably 10 hours or so got the hardware on the door this morning and then Justin actually came over one day that I was sick and he ended up working in here he sanded around the doors and got them to open and close perfect we just needed some like very finicky sand work, you know, like where you have to really just get these tiny little edges off to make them open and close nicely. And then we added the weather stripping, which was great. Added all the hardware this morning, which looked a little something like this. And I kind of wanted the handles to be substantial, yet still a little bit delicate. And then I got this latch actually when I got the doors. And then this surface bolt I also got when I got the doors from Pasadena Architectural Salvage. So I found the placement of the first handle and I drilled a couple of pilot holes and then I used the screw screws that came with it. They're just like flathead screws and I just screwed those in. They looked really nice in the end and then did the right handle as well. We did the lock and then also the surface bolt. The only thing that's kind of challenging is these doors are hard to share um, just because it's a little backlit. But look, we have workable doors! Hello, world. Goodbye, world. And you just lock it back up and then latch it at the bottom. So, we are working on the built ins. And I need to figure out the proper shelf placement of what I want to do because I am going to have the one tilted front shelf, which is going to have books across it. And we're also going to be adding some lights in the shelf. So there's going to be like a little picture light right about here. So I'm thinking of eliminating this shelf because 
We just don't need her. I feel like the skinny section too is like what your eye is drawn to in this whole entire bookcase. So I think kind of creating larger chunks will be nicer. We can't move this one and we can't move this one. So we only have these two that can be moved. Look how great these picture lights are that I got. I found these at World Market and they were $60 a piece, which I thought was such a bargain for a picture light because even on Amazon, they were kind of more pricey and I couldn't find one I loved on Amazon. So picked up these, I got four of them and I got them in store too, which was great. But I think they're gonna go kind of here-ish. What do we think? I think, yeah. Like it looks, can you hold that like that? It looks really prettier like that. It also takes up more space. Oh, true. Oh, it looks so much better like that. So we have the shelves in order over here. I wanna share with you guys this really pretty trim that I picked up for the doors. Now this is called egg and dart trim and we actually looked this up and it was a pretty common trim style used like in the turn of the century. So it should work in a lot of different styles of homes. And I just think this is gonna be so beautiful. It's gonna be stained dark like the wood on here and then we're going to use it to of course trim up these areas because right here we just have a gap from where we removed the previous trim and there is like full on gap filler in here. So we wanna hide that and give a nice decorative border to this. Retrimming your door is actually pretty simple. So all you're gonna start off by doing is measuring the width of your door and then marking that onto your trim. And you're gonna to wanna to mark that on the side of the trim that's actually going closest to the door or closest to the window or closest to whatever you're retrimming. And then you're gonna miter out from there. So that's gonna give you the perfect direction each time. And you're just gonna want those corners to be cut on 45 degree angles. That way when they meet up, it creates a 90 degree for our perfect squared off door. So I'm adding the piece of trim on the right side here. And because we have that surface bolt that's going to kind of be interfering with the trim, I actually had to sand out a pretty large chunk from the trim that's going on the bottom. That way the surface bolt still has a place to go. I actually cut one of the pieces of trim wrong, so I didn't have a long enough piece to span the entire bottom section, so I had to kind of meet these pieces up, but because we're staining it dark in the end, it actually looked really great, you can't even tell. Trims on our doors, and I want to start working on the lighting in here. I think I shared with you guys already these really great little lights that I got from World Market. They were like 60 bucks each. Uh, so I want to kind of figure out the placement in all of these, and I think we're just going to use one of these spare shelves here, because we have a couple extras, and just kind of create a template, and then follow that same template for all four bookcases. Uh, I think a tiny bit higher than that. I would go a tiny bit higher. A little more. I think there. This is an extra shelf from our bookcases that we created a template out of. So I ended up marking the exact center point of the sconce that we're adding or the picture light. And so I'm just gonna transfer this into our bookcase. We also created two little marks on the sides which we're using in alignment with these holes to kind of use as markers. So I'm just holding that right to there and then transferring this measurement to the wall. There's our placement. So on the back side of the bookcases, we just have some scrap wood and we're gonna be putting on some liquid nails. And then just kind of taking this and then popping it on the back here. So when we screw in, it actually has something to grip onto. So our light's gonna be more so connected to this. And then all of this is gonna give us some nice surface space to actually grip to. I use some half inch screws to secure these because the backing of these Ikea Billy bookcases are really only like an eighth of an inch thick of that kind of cardboardy material. So the wood on the back is going to act as more of a surface for this light. 
So a question that I kind of had when I thought about putting the lights in these bookcases was how are we gonna turn them on? How is the electrical gonna work? Because I don't wanna have to go up to every single one and either twist something. I want it to feel like it's actually electrically wired into this bookcase that's going to act as a built-in. So these are the fun things I found on Amazon. Now this is like a wireless electrical light switch, I guess. So essentially this has an on and off button on it. Um, and then this plugs into the wall. And so what this does is it actually connects up and pairs with this via signals. And you can basically turn this on and turn it off and it activates this plug. So if I turn it on, this plug would then turn on whatever's plugged into it. If I turn it off, it turns it off. And I've tested it a couple times. It actually works really great. And we even tested it all the way going back in my room and it was working, turning on and off. Um, and this is like 10 bucks. So what we are going to be doing is plugging this into the wall plugging in a surge protector to this on the side that way we have multiple that we can go from and then wiring each of the lights that are in each bookcase to a power cord and plugging it in so we're basically kind of rewiring the sconces to be plug in sconces and then plugging them into here and then we're going to be able to control them from here does that make sense if it doesn't, I will share with you guys. So let's get started. So for this project, I'm gonna need four extension cords. Now, these are 15 foot extension cords I got at Lowe's, but you can also get extension cords that are already cut. Now we're gonna actually have to cut these ones because these are 15 feet. They're gonna be going on the right bookshelves, but on the left bookshelves, they have these eight foot ones, which are power sources on the left. So we're able to get away with shorter ones. And these ones actually already have the wires exposed. So we're gonna be wiring up the light to these wires here, plugging it in to the surge protector. And then on these ones, we're actually gonna have to cut away this section. So cut it right about here and then expose the wires like this um, and then wire from there. So either or, whichever you could find, this one definitely is easier, but if you don't have that option, you could totally use um, actual extension cords. We are gonna need a hole for our electrical, so I just drilled that right through the center, and then we're gonna string our electrical through the backside of the bookcase and out through the front, and then these wires are actually what you're going to be connecting up your light with. So this is a hard-wired sconce, and what we're essentially kind of turning it into is a wired sconce. So what you could purchase as a wired plug-in sconce is what we're creating. Oh my God, it's working! It's freaking working! It's just dangling here, you guys, but let's see if it works. Ah! <laughs> like, imagine this is just mounted on the side, and you're just like, and then all of the lights are gonna be connected. That's satisfying. It's so cool! This is the coolest thing I've ever bought, and it was $10. You know he'll be linking it. You know I'll be linking it. Okay, there we go. Wow. <gasps> oh! That is an on display book. That is gorgeous. So here is this end and you basically just cut it off. And then inside is the same three wires that were exposed on the previous one, but this one's longer. So we're gonna put these on the right side. So I'm just gonna kind of snip this down and then expose these wires. this wire stripper tool to remove the plastic or the little coating on the outside of the wire but if you don't have one of these you can always just use scissors you just have to be careful and only cut away like very small sections and then leave the wire in the center alrighty so we have all four of our lights and this is a moment of truth oh it looks so good can you believe this is controlling that and then what I'm gonna do with it is probably just like either mounted on the outside or maybe on the inside somewhere. You can also put this right next to your light switch too, like my light switch is right here. It's just 
just a hand girl who walk on the same ground. You remind me of the days. So I woke up today. So little congested um, and I did the staining on the doors and it looks so good on the trim. I am going to just leave it or the tape on there just for one more day because I might want to stain it one more time, give it like a double stain to deepen it a little bit more tomorrow. So I'm going to see how it looks um, once it fully dries down. I'm going to give it a day, but that is today's video. I hope that you guys loved it. You can get a little sneak peek of the coffee table right there, which just came in. I'm so excited about that. We're going to have to DIY a little bit of that, but I will catch you guys in our next one, which we are going to be installing all the bookcases, trimming them all out and painting them, like giving them that built in look, which is finally going to complete like all the walls in the living room. And then we can get to decorating. This room is going to be done like within the next like week and a half, two weeks. I'm feeling it. I think we're going to be able to do it. So make sure to subscribe to watch the process and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.